Parental Guidance by Julie Manning. The judges said of this poem that it is an elegy for lost parents, a narrative of remembered family life, a poem on the disconnection of grief and the grappling with its integration. Julie Manning is a poet, visual artist and lawyer. Her poems have appeared in various poetry journals and anthologies and has been listed for numerous highly respected prizes. Parental Guidance Setting my star to a mountain at Christmas on an occasion my father allowed us to drink. His alcohol leave past soporific. His blokish colleagues, three or four sheets to the wind, hauling their eskies and unwelcome children up our steps, stubbing their Rothmans in ashtrays like hubcaps, my mother's shiny relics from magazines. Through a screen door, beer talk droned over the lawn as kids ran past our crab apple, littered with leaves where green pods had burned. We stood under the sprinkler, posing one-legged like concrete flamingos. Soon I would be called for my piano rendition, and to read someone's card pressed into my hand, like sentimental contraband. No one cared for carols played from sheet music, with lyrebirds on the cover, and anyway, I was absent, playing songs from the road that led out of town in my head. Raucous drinking and work talk was a signal to walk with swallows in late afternoon, skirting a forest past a farmhouse like the band's Big Pink where a fence turned paddocks to graves and a grazing ewe on a busted headstone picked grass from cracks in a young soldier's inscription, carting a fragment home to my father. Religions cause more wars than anything else. At my mother's funeral, there were hymns and hired harp music. My sister backhanded me valium as I greeted strangers intent on respect. Like the attendants of crows we disturbed on the way in, I wanted to wander the margins, to walk out back through ranunculus and scratch blue ice off the burial blooms. We were placed in cinder block like an outlying scar, and spring uncoiled in shoots as we stood in a sepia group stark on a hill, dressed in black and moth-eaten twill. I performed a speech as a missive of thanks, dedicating wild geese and a family of things, my mother just memory wavering from a machine a cornucopia of hairstyles and places, a photograph album of stills and stairs, or under palms on a West Sydney lawn, my mother would joke, the doves shaped like finials were praying to be spared, the killing heat God allowed. A trinity of steeples over the town, as blooms from the day ungloved and fell. I stayed in a room, the air heavy with leftover wreaths, as twilight cast pink cloud lines, and a troop of roos were dark late shadows. All I could hear was someone telling me at least she hadn't died on my birthday. There were no almond blossoms for my father, no grinding for him already gone to a line of light years before, when the staff latched a door quietly, and I thought of the fragment I'd carried home for him, his love of Ecclesiastes and ragged pronouncements. The church got rich on its ill-gotten gains, I still don't know how to believe. It's still not dark yet, as Dylan sings. In the hallway leaving, I think of the nurse who eased in late with no name badge or directions. Young, in shadow, strangely calm. She arranged my mother's pillow from a chair, steered mum along her lifelong dream of walking the Camino through stands of oak and eucalypt, high into the palliative air, then left, as they say, without a word.